My new song, Meet You, was just released on Hexagon Records on Friday. Thank you for all the love on that, by the way. It's been amazing reading all your comments. So, as always, I'll go through the process of how it was made, how it was signed, and I'll give away all the samples from the song. I hope you enjoy. Here's the making of Meet You. So, if you haven't heard it yet, here's a little snippet of it, and you can also find the full song in the description below. So this song was actually started almost three years ago in 2016 with an artist called Daniel Bloom. We made the verse, aka the break, of the song together back then and I tried making it into a full track without succeeding for almost three years. I just could never get it right and I put it on hold for a while. After my track, I Deep Dip was picked up by Don Diablo and released on Hexagon. He wanted new music so I remembered that old idea and luckily I could find the stems of the piano and the vocal chops from three years ago because I remembered it sort of sounded like something that could be a fit for Hexagon. So I put those stems in a new project and started testing out drops for probably the 20th time in the last three years. Since I only have the stems from that, this video is going to be more focused on the drop and the break is pretty simple luckily, so there's not too much to explain there. So I tried some different things, but I couldn't come up with anything cool. Thus, when I can come up with ideas for a drop, as I've said before, I do I try to put limitations on, my, on myself and do like a challenge, sort of. So that's what I did. I decided I would make the main lead, like the main sound of the drop, with only a default in it preset that I could find uh, in some plugin and I couldn't modify it, or at least not a lot. So I pulled up a synth called Diva and that sounds like this. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I did was remove the reverb. I, n I never used the reverb of the plugin itself unless for creative purposes as I tried to keep the same reverbs on everything to make the sound uh, cleaner or the mix sound clearer, cleaner. And that was it. Then I had this sound and I couldn't come up with a cool melody so I gave myself another challenge to hopefully spark some ideas. Something I've wanted to try for a long time ever since I heard the Don Diablo remix of Good Grief by Bastille is to try to make the drop in triplets but the rest of the song not in triplets. I thought that was so cool how that switch up worked in that song and so I tried that. I had these piano chords and uh, I ended up with a melody that I liked. It sounds like this. <laughs> And then it continues on and has some modulation on the end. It's a pretty long melody, which is because the rhythm of the melody and the amount of notes is very static and boring. So I had to make up for it in like the interestingness of the melody. The next step was trying to make the lead sound cool. So with the effects, with the automations, it sounded like this. Approximately in the end. So, how did that happen? <laughs> I'll start with uh, the effects. No, I'll start actually. I'll start with the automate the automations. This is the first one. It's a pitch bend, which made the melody a bit more human and not too static. It sounds like this and yeah, it just gives it more life. Then the cutoff filter helped in creating even more movement and finally an automation of the noise envelope oscillator within the plugin. It's just add some grit and some well noise in places and I like the sort of rawness it gives the sound. So that's it for automations, now let's dive into the effect chains. So I start off with a reverb, it's the Valhalla room, and it's a, it's a pretty short one. But it's just to put the sound in a space and make it sound bigger instantly. The next trick is doing pretty much the same thing. It's something that I do a lot, which I've explained in the making of videos of IDP Dip and Strangers Do. And it's just having this super short delay and with like a radio filter 
If I exaggerate it, it sounds like this. So it just helps making the sound a bit more epic. Then we have a longer, more regular delay to fill up the spaces in between the notes. Then a third Echo Boy, I love this plugin. It adds this weird effect, which is sort of randomized so you get additional movement in the sound. So then a heavy distortion is added. It's fittingly named Decapitator because it completely crushes it. It pretty much does the job of a compressor or even a limiter. It just makes the lead uh, really, really crushed and fat, sort of. Then to make the lead stand out more, because I felt it was a bit too close and dark, I had this plugin called Manipulator, but what I do with this is I add it I use it to sort of make a copy of the lead, just one octave up with some like form and shifting, and it sounds like this. To exaggerate. So it just helps in making it clear. Then an EQ boosts the sides of the highs, which make it which makes the sound more cle clear and wide sort of. Finally, for some additional grit, I guess. I use this vocoder called Vocal Synth, which has this module which sounds sort of like what you'd get out of a guitar amp. It sounds like this, and then exaggerated. So all these small things, aka the guitar amp, the small octave up, the three delays, these things, they add up. And I think those small details, when they add up, are like a big part of making things sound more um, unique and exciting in the end to the ear. So then I round off this mixer channel with uh, an EQ, just cutting out the low end. So um, this mixer channel, no, I actually didn't, didn't use this one. Uh, this one feeds into another mix channel, mixer channel because I'd run out of space on the previous one. It starts with another reverb, and uh, it's a pretty short one again, just to add even more space. And then another delay, delay. Again, that effect sounds like this, exaggerated. But this one is automated towards, uh, it's automated so that the effect uh, gets stronger towards the end of each bar and then a lot stronger towards the fourth one Which helps to like round out the melody and give it some groove it might be hard to hear uh, so I'll Just exaggerate it a bit for you So it sounds a bit creepy, but it uh, gave it like sort of a nice vibe in my opinion at least then another, another EQ cuts out the lows that because the reverbs and the echo boys caused like some mud in the lows, so I had to cut those off before I continued. And then I add this Pro Q to sort of balance the sound really. I think I did this later on in the mix. It was a bit too strong in the low mids around 100 to 500 hertz. So I reduced that and then another dip at 2.5k. It was just a bit, a little bit annoying he around here. And a an sh high shelf boosting to give it some spark. Then I added the manipulator again, but for another reason this time. This is to pitch it down towards the end of the melody. I think, yeah. So that's how that sounds. I used this plugin instead of the pitch bend in the Diva itself because I wanted the pitching to affect both the reverbs and delays, not just the dry synth sound, to give it more punch and sort of sound more like a vinyl stop, if that makes sense. So since the sound was still pretty dynamic, uh, and like it had pretty strong curves on each note, I wanted to kill that to make uh, the mix more powerful, because if it has too much, too many, or too much dynamics, aka the distance between the loudest and the lowest peaks, that eats up headroom really quick. So quickly, <laughs> so I did something quite drastic. I used a brick wall limiter. 
and really push it hard. It, I love this limiter actually from AOM. I talked about it in my video on mastering and this is how it sounds. And then without. So just one more time with actually just so you hear how bad it makes it sound because it actually sounds pretty bad and it gives the sound a, a lot of clipping and some artifacts but in the whole mix it just works you can't really hear those artifacts so that's quite interesting and then I cut out the lows again so and I round this off with a side chain I use the kickstart I love that it's just so simple and it's at 70%. I usually go for something a bit harder, but uh, a lot of the notes on of the melody are on the one, aka on the kick. So to not make it drown out, I it had pretty much had to be this way. So that's pretty much the synth. I did bounce it out though and cut it up a little just to make it a bit more controlled. But what helped make this lead sound more unique was adding one more layer on the main melody of uh, my voice. It sounds, I just recorded it on my phone and yeah, it sounds like this before I did anything. So that sounds like a dying dog, right? But then I chopped it up and it sounds like this. With the effect, it sounds like this. And together with the main synth, it sounds like this. So to run through this one quite quickly, all I did was I added some auto-tune because <laughs> yeah, I, I think you can hear why it needed some auto-tuning and then a compressor to really tame it a lot, like completely without dynamics because I don't need that and um, as with the lead sound. Then two reverbs, just put it in the same space as the lead to make them fit to better together than some high boosting. And um, yeah, this is quite interesting. I boost like the sides only where, uh, only on the sides where, because when I played alongside with the lead, I could, I EQ it accordingly, which sort of means that I take away everything that I don't hear of this vocal and I boost whatever made, helped make the main lead sound more unique, if that makes sense. Then some form and shifting just made it a little less harsh and high and yeah, some uh, slight distortion, pretty much just use this to boost the volume I see now, but then I cut out the lows again, a lot of it because I didn't need it, then the same sidechain as the main lead, that's pretty much that. And I actually, yeah, I add another synth actually to help with making it sound more interesting and unique. It's, it's um, a Simplant and it just gives the track some ambience uh, and vibe. It's uh, uh, just a 100% wet reverb, reverbed out Simplant synth. It sounds like this, <coughs> where I boost the sides of the highs with yeah, as I said 100% wet reverb boosting the sides and I remove some of the attack and I have a pitch automation so yeah that's pretty much it sounds like this so yeah I think that's pretty much it then for the bass line this is gonna be a long ass video. It's just one instance of Trillion. Sounds like this without any effects. That was loud. <laughs> it's a pretty standard, just plucky bass sound. With effects though, it sounds like this. It sounds pretty ugly. And then to go through that, it starts with this, this is without, then with the first plugin, which is a bit speak, just makes it a bit more gritty and just makes it sound worse, to be honest. But I just love that grit. Then a transient master takes away some attack, yeah, some attack just to make 
the sound fit more with the lead because the lead has this slow attack and this couldn't stand out too much. Then some distortion to add some fatness and some boosting to the highs. A reverb to make it give to give it that big feel sort of. Then I finally take away the sub. And uh, yeah, I use the same sidechain as with the leads. And a vocal synth that does pretty much nothing. And an invisible limiter to do the same thing uh, as with the lead, just squashes it completely. As with the main lead. Then some final EQing to balance the sound in the mix. I think I did that later on actually, just to compare it in the mix. For the sub, it's the, all, as always, the reactor uh, razor punch in the balls preset. Just love it. And uh, I always use it, just with 100% reverb, I mean sidechain. And I also cut out the highs. Now for the kick, this is the main sound. It's made with Sonic Academy's kick and tuned to uh, the key of the song. But I also have quite a few extra layers down here. This is the first one. A little top kick to make it sound a bit less round than another one doing the same thing, just in a different way. And a third one, giving it some more noise and some top end to make it pop. And finally, a cowbell actually. Very short one to make it cut through better in the mix. So making kicks like this takes a lot of time and I usually do it when I have all the other elements down. So I'll just have the one main layer that I showed first and then I'll perfect it with all these top layers to fit perfectly in the mix later on. This kick probably took me like five hours or something to get right. I'm actually curious how long this project has been. Yeah, 54 hours just for this drop though, because I bounced out the stems and continued working and made the break and the builds in another project. So the total time spent is probably around uh, 100 hours for this one. So for the claps and snares, this is the first layer. I've got four layers, but this is the first one, one main snare that I use a lot and it sounds like this. I just cut it a bit short and cut out the lows because I just needed the attack of the sound. Then I add this clap with alternating lengths. So it's done short and then long to give the track just a bit better groove. Just boosted the highs probably and took out the lows, yeah. And to get a bigger feel on the claps, I add these like church claps to either side. And they're both distorted, I think. Yeah, they're distorted. And then all these snares and claps are brought into this clap snare buzz, where, yeah, the mids actually of the highs are reduced. I usually do it the other way around, but I needed to make space for the lead because it's pretty mono and in the middle. So I had to cut out some of uh, the snares and claps to make space for that. And then as I did with the lead and bass, I brick wall limited it to just squash it accordingly in the mix. So that's pretty much that. Oh, I actually have some extra like white noise sort of to make, yeah, to help accentuate the groove. I have this white noise. which pans to uh, either side and gradually increasingly to uh, make it sound more interesting to the ear. Then I have this distorted noise to make it some, get, just give it some spark on the one and uh, some additional impact. Then I have these white noises. It's a great trick to get some more power. It sounds like this with the kick. In the, in the context of the mix, you can't really hear it, but it adds some power. Now I have this tonal noise. Just going in the background and it sort of acts as a root note to sort of bind the harmonics uh, of the rest of the track with. So that helps a lot in grounding the track to like this root note. 
then I have finally a crowd noise in the background just to add some movement and human element. And I also reduce the mids of the highs with this one to make space for everything else. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So that was a long segment. I hope it wasn't too boring, but I think that was it for this drop pretty much. And to make up for that long segment, remember that you can download all the samples of the song in the description. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll reply ASAP. Now regarding how it was signed, I had just released a Deepy Dip as my comeback track on Hexagon uh, this fall, I think it was October, and we were looking for a follow-up track on Hexagon. I sent Don this track and he was on tour in China at that moment, so he started testing it out there. He came back to me a few days later and wanted to sign it to a new Generation Hex EP. I was super happy to be able to be part of that since I was actually on the very first Generation Hex EP back in 2016 before my break. And this sort of felt like full circle being able to do a track on there again. Anyways, there's actually new music coming on Friday already and I'll show you a little snippet of that in just a second. But first, thank you so much for watching and all, all the love you guys are giving these series. I really, really appreciate it. I read all the comments and it means the world to me. So I'll see you guys next Monday. <laughs>